Hello, this is Jonas from the Solution Center. Uh, we're going to show you some basic Python Red, uh, Redfish scripts today. And um, we've got a few prepared in here. They've been in white papers previously, and um, I've updated some of them uh, for this series so that uh, they'll be a little bit more interesting. To do this, um, first of all, you can just have a quick look at the basic one, um, just to get the power state of the server. Uh, in here we have uh, done some imports. I've actually ignored warnings, as you can see on top, uh, because I don't want them in this case. They generate too uh, much extra output. And uh, from here we basically just access a, a URI on the server. And uh, I'm going to show, actually, since we have, um, we're just picking out the power state, I'm actually going to show you what is included, uh, what is returned from the server uh, by outputting the entire data, the return message. So um, let's do that now. We execute the script and uh, you'll see the output that we actually get back from it. We're picking out only a very, very simple uh, part of it, just the power state, but uh, you'll see that there's quite a lot in here, um, information about quite a lot on, uh, on the server, specs as well as um, uh, power states, etc., etc., different things you can do with it. So um, actually, let me open up the web page um, so we can actually see it then. Uh, in the GUI, so to speak, in the web browser. When we access the top level, which is uh, the IP uh, of the IDRAC and then slash redfish slash version one, you get this top level menu. And um, in this case, we want to go down into uh, the sub menu, which is in the systems and the systems embedded and um, have a look at what's in there. It's a little bit more detail there. So we drill down a little bit. And once we do that, we have to authenticate. The top level is, uh, you don't need to authenticate for the top level, but um, once you drill down, you'll need to do that. As you can see here, we have quite a lot of information included. We are going to use uh, other scripts to pull that out later on or to use that. But uh, in this case, um, we're looking for uh, just the power state. Let's just search for that, actually. All right, and there you go. So power state is currently on. And that's the only one we're going to pull out. Let's go back to the script and have a look at that there and actually execute it. We can actually go back then and take away these, the comment out to the section that I had and then remove the last data print and um, kick that off. And there you go. Power state is on. So now let's just have a look at a different example. We'll look, just pull out the event log from the server, which is also very easy. It's just a matter of the, the URI that you access uh, in order to get the information you want. And uh, since you can browse through it in your web browser, it's quite easy to find out what sections are in there and what you need to pull out. So we execute the get event log script. And in here, we've basically listed up the event entries that are in there. Not too much, but um, we've got a few log entries. And if you look at the actual script, you can see here what the URI is that we are accessing. In this case, it's managers, not systems. It's managers and then IDREC embedded. So we'll go and then check the fan status. So in this case, we do a little bit more detail. We actually go in and uh, first of all, we pull in the information about uh, cooled by, which lists up all the uh, the different fans in a system. And once we have that, we're going to query them one by one. So we actually do multiple qu queries in here uh, to get all the uh, information out. So if you look at it here, you can see the cooled by section. And it's cooled by all these fans. And if we then take that, we can just pick one of the uh, entries in there and um, directly check that, and you can get the fan information. This is what's so nice with uh, a web API. You just browse through it. So now we query the first fan in the system. You can see in here. Um, how fast it's spinning. And uh, what we're going to do is then we're going to start querying each of the fans and get the information for all of them.
as always, we just specify the address address, the username and the password, and it'll list this up. I sped this up a little bit so we don't have to wait for it. Since it does multiple queries, it takes a little bit longer time. So one new rack server, that's how many fans you got in it. It's quite a few. Let's actually try this against um, another box that is um, sitting in a chassis. And then you can actually get the chassis fans. This is uh, an FC630 uh, sitting in an FX2 chassis. And since we pass through the information of the chassis into the server, it's possible to query the server and get information about the chassis fans, which is what we're seeing here right now. We can also do this against multiple servers. So for example, if you want to get the health status for um, a few servers, maybe you have a list of servers you care about and you want to get the information for them, uh, it's possible for you to, um, to do that just by, um, in this case, we're doing it very simply, just running a for loop. So let's have a look at uh, the multi-server status script. For this one, uh, we're just pulling out the server health status and um, we take a file as the input and the file name would contain then the IP addresses of the IDRAX uh, that we want to query. So we just create that now. We create a list of IDRAX. We enter in the two systems that we are currently using for our demonstration. And then we feed that into the script. This requires, of course, that you have the same authentication on both or on all systems in that list, uh, since it will use root Calvin in this case for all of them. And there you go. It shows you which system has what health status. We can also do power, power actions. So we can power things on and off, obviously. Um, and um, in this case, we are going to, uh, first of all, pull out the information in regard to what uh, the server can do. So you have certain power actions that are available to a system. And um, then we let the user pick which one they want to use. So let's go and check this. We're actually um, just going to query the system on the same uh, level we had before. Let's see if we can get back to that. So this is the, uh, the systems embedded. There you go. There you have the actions that are available. So um, we query it first. The script will query the server, get those, uh, those actions that are available, and then it'll present those to the user and let the user pick. Let's try that out now. There you got the list. So um, we can just uh, we can power this off, for example. Just do a force off, and there you go. That's off. We can also set uh, the server to boot from a particular boot target, for example, Pixie, or boot from the SD card, or uh, you know, boot from whatever. And um, the same thing for the for the boot. Um, is uh, well basically what we just had for the the power options uh, you can also have for the boot order so um, not the boot order but the boot options in this case it'll override the boot order so it will um, we'll ask the, the server what uh, options it has for booting and uh, let the user pick from those and the list is right here right so we've got a few options and see if we can pull them out and um, and change it. Right now it's uh, it's set to none. It's not set to boot to anything, so it'll just boot straight off according to the preset boot order. And with this we can override that. It's very useful if you want to install a server or if you want to troubleshoot it or you want to do something else with it. So um, it could be quite handy. And there we go. And if you compare, you can see side by side that that's exactly the same. We can let's try to override it with the SD card. And there you go. It's very quick. Right, right now it's none. And if we update or refresh the page, that has now changed as expected. These are just a, uh, a few examples on you know, how you can uh, play with Redfish to uh, make your servers um, a lot more easier to manage. So good luck with it and uh, have a
Have fun.